Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am back with yet another bright and vibrant Tumblr tutorial today. So I'm going to show you all of the steps on how I put this Tumblr together. And of course, everything I use will be both listed and linked down in the description box down below. You will even find some discount codes there as well. Before you go, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It helps my channel out a lot and I can't wait to get started. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. So before I can get started on my Tumblr, I'm going to mix some glitters together first. So I decided that after choosing the vinyl that I was going to be using for today's video, I wanted to pick some different colors to mix up to give me the co glitter colors that I'm going to be using in each of the glittered sections. So in this first cup here, I'm mixing four of my really beautiful purple glitters that I absolutely love. They are all from my Asia Creations. So I'm using Quintanilla, Purple Diamond, Mermazing, and galaxy dust. So for really beautiful colors, different cuts of glitter as well. I don't always like to use the same cuts. I like to use chunkies and fines and some medium cups as well when I'm mixing glitter. I find that I get the most vibrant and most sparkle out of my mixes when I mix the different cuts of glitter and not sticking to one sort of cut of glitter, if that makes any sense. So after I'm pretty satisfied with this first color, we're going to move on to sort of like this hot pink but also corally orange color that I'm creating. And so for this cup or for this color, I'm going to say we're going to be using a few glitters as well. So I'm using two orange, well, three oranges and then one pink. So we're going to go in with Sunkissed Coral. I'm also going to be using Withered Rose, which is a beautiful, beautiful, vibrant orange. I'm also using Amore, which is the pink color I'm using. And then finally, I'm using a newer glitter that might yet, not yet be on the website for my Asia Creations. This is Ivalice's Custom Mix. So this was another Glitter Bestie box where Glitter Besties created the glitter for the subscription box. They were kind of chosen. And so that was one of the newer glitters that I'm using using. So finally here for my last glitter here, we're going to use a bunch of different shades of blue here. So here I'm using a lots of different cuts. So I have Peter Pan. I'm using Rainbow Fish from Glitter by Mama Boss. I'm also using Tropical Blues as well as uh, Glimmering Heather as well. So I'm using a lot of different colors and cuts here as well. Lots of different shades. Of course, I will post all of the glitters right here on the screen, but I also will list them down in the description box and where you can grab those in case you'd like to grab and snag some of these glitters for yourself. So now that I'm satisfied with my glitter mixing, we're going to go and get started on this tumbler. So I have a 32 ounce plump here from the Steel Magnolia Company. This was a cup that I had previously stripped of its design. And so I'm using this for this beautiful summer vibes design. So you'll notice too that this cup already has the bottom popped out. The one thing I'm going to say about this is that I will link a tutorial right here on how you can pop out the bottom of your Steel Magnolia cup. I will tell you that you can only do this on certain cups and I've only found the Steel Magnolia cups to have that removable bottom to be able to do this glitter button design that we're going to do for this cup. So not all cups you can do this with, but if you do happen to purchase from the Steel Magnolia company, know that you can full well pop those bottoms out and be able to design the bottom as well. So I'm using this beautiful like neon leopard print sunflower vibes that I got. This is a print from Myesha Creations and we're going to do a full wrap on the cup. So we're going to be doing a lot of cutting of this vinyl. And yes, although I do think that there probably is an easier way to do this, I don't always do things the easy way. I sometimes just do it the way that makes the most sense in my brain when I'm designing a cup. But in hindsight, you certainly could create the template that you want, right, with these definite different, different, you know, uh, these split areas in Cricut Design Space and then just cut your vinyl and roll it onto your cup. Um, I did not do that because... I wasn't really sure how many of the triangular or V-shaped sections I was even going to have and how it would work. And so I didn't want to have to try and spend a lot of time in Cricut Design Space getting frustrated. So for me, it's just much easier for me to do all the design work on the cup and kind of just have it go with the flow. 
So as you see, I have wrapped that entire cup in this beautiful sunflower vinyl. I'm now going to spend some time and I will trim up the top rim here. So just pushing over that vinyl over the top and then I will take my craft knife and we're going to run my craft knife around the top edge to remove all of that excess or overlapped vinyl that is over the top rim here. Once I've gotten the top rim all cleaned up, we're going to focus on the bottom. And so for the bottom, because we have that open feature of the bottom of the cup, we're going to do something a little bit different with the vinyl on the bottom because I don't want stainless steel exposed. I want to be able to fully wrap the bottom of this cup and be able to epoxy over the entire bottom. So the way that we're going to do this is instead of pulling this tautly and then cutting around that bottom edge with a craft knife or my cup edging tool. I am pulling tautly the vinyl and I am tucking it into that inner lip of the bottom of the cup. So again, I have the bottom of my tumbler removed. So if you don't have that inner dip, you can still do this. You just have to pull straight over the bottom. In hindsight, something I should have done, which would have caused less wrinkles um, in my vinyl as I was trying to do this, is if I had cut little slits and um, along the edge of that vinyl, it would have made it much easier and much cleaner to be able to pull that vinyl over the edge without having any issues with, with the vinyl kind of wrinkling and me having to spend a lot of time with my squeegee tool kind of flattening all those areas out. So now that I've gotten the entire bottom kind of pulled over, I'm just taking the edge of my squeegee tool and just pushing the vinyl into the inner portion of the bottom here to make sure I get really good adhesion. And that way I can now take my craft knife and be able to cut off any excess. So I'm just sticking my craft knife into that outer um, ring of the bottom of the cup there and making sure that I am just cutting away any excess, anything that's gonna kind of be in the way. Then going back with my squeegee tool here and just really making sure that everything is adhered nicely. You're also going to see me go in with my heat gun and my heat gun was really just to help me sort of push out all of those wrinkles that I had kind of happening along the bottom edge to the best that I can. So again, going back over with the felt edge of my um, squeegee tool there and just kind of pushing everything down and making sure everything is nicely adhered to the inner ring of that tumbler with my vinyl. So once I'm pretty satisfied with this, I did play with this for quite a bit of time, but once I am satisfied, this cup will now be ready for me to do all the intricate sort of tape work that I'm going to be able to do to be able to expose the stainless steel for us to add our glitter to. So now it's time to get our vinyl or V split sections kind of cut. This is where we're going to add the glitter. So I'm using painter's tape and I'm creating my own, you know, areas, you know, the V areas that will then be replaced with the glitter. This took a little bit of playing around with because I wanted to make sure that my lines on both sides were even and straight and that they both met really nicely at the back of the cup. So I did have to do a lot of playing around with it, but I'm just using one inch painter's tape and I'm just, again, making those two pieces of painter's tape cross over each other and create a very even sort of point on the front side and on the back side. So after I get my first sort of section laid down, I'm going to go in with a second piece of tape to make this section thicker and make it bigger. So I wanted some really large sections that I'm going to be adding glitter to because although I am absolutely in love with this vinyl, I did know that adding glitter was just something I needed to do. So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just, you know, small sections of vinyl or small sections of glitter that were present. I really wanted to make sure that there was as much glitter present on the tumbler as there was vinyl. So I'm going to go in with a second piece of tape right along the edge of the first section on the outer edge or towards the top of the cup if that makes sense so that I have a really thick center of um a really thick center of tape that of course will then translate to being glitter once we've cut all of these sections out. 
So once I have gotten that first section laid down, again, this took a lot of playing around with for me because I'm trying to make sure that it's straight and for whatever reason, I would put one side of tape on, then I'd put the other side of the tape on and they just wouldn't match up the way I wanted them to. So I did a lot of playing around with in order to get them to be as even as I could. Yes, definitely if I had done this in Cricut Design Space, probably would have had less of an issue, but sometimes I just like to watch myself struggle <laughs> instead of doing it what might have been an easier way. So second layer of tape is on and now we're going to go and do the next section. For the next section, I kind of just eyeballed how far up I wanted the second V section to be. And so I wanted this kind of closer to the top. And I, again, just kind of eyeballed it. It's probably about two and a half, almost three inches away from that first section of tape. And this one was a lot easier for me to get lined up and even because again, I had that first section to kind of use as my, you know, as my guide. Um, as I was trying to put the two sections of tape onto my cup. So a little less struggle, but definitely still some struggle here. <laughs> I certainly would say that probably if you don't feel like working in Cricut Design Space to, you know, create a template for something like this, and you don't want to struggle like I am right now with tape and have it take a lot of time, what also might be a good idea is to literally just get a template for a V split for a whatever size cup you're using to recreate this design and then just cut that out of stencil vinyl. It would just make it a little bit easier so that you could then sort of do this design but not have to spend as much time with the taping off and cutting everything up if that makes sense. So I've got my two sections done now and so I loved the two section look but I felt like I needed more. I needed more glitter. I had three glitter I was going to be working with and I was determined to use three glitters. So I decided on this back side here um, under the first you know, V section that we created, I decided that I wanted to add a smaller V section here, which is where my blue glitter will then live or lie. So for this section here, again, I'm following the guide of that middle section there, the one we started with as my guide, and just to line up my, my initial tape lines. And so I want to make sure, though, that I'm not just trimming off all of that vinyl on the bottom. So we're going to scoot over into the next clip here where I show you how I'm going to still keep the vinyl that's folded over the bottom part of this cup and be able to still have a triangular section to be able to use to glitter later. So I still have kind of that bottom section kind of all, I just kind of pulled the tape over the bottom edge. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some tape, some electrical tape, which is a little bit easier to manipulate and work with when you are needing to cut at an edge. And so what I'm doing here is I am literally just taking a piece of electrical tape and I am creating sort of my own line around the bottom edge of the cup. Obviously the only part of this that's going to matter is the section that is in between and across those two sections of tape. So I wanna make sure I'm still keeping the integrity of the vinyl pulled over that we spent so much time pulling over the bottom inner rim of the bottom of the cup. And so I want to make sure I'm still keeping that. So I'm just creating sort of what would be my tape line or barrier and now using that to be able to take my craft knife to trim against that that electrical tape and through those two blue painters tape lines so that I can cut out this perfect triangle here. So now I'm just going to do all of the trimming and so now I'm just taking my craft knife and I'm starting with the small section here and I'm just kind of cutting around or on the inner and outer edges of the tape lines here. That way I can have sort of those sections that are all taped be exposed so that we can add our glitter to them. So of course I'm not going to like sit here and make you watch me painstakingly trim all of this up. We will go into a quick like speed session of me trimming up all of this tape. Really you're just dragging your craft knife and making sure you're making those cut lines and then removing just the tape and the vinyl that's under the tape. I'm then going to take some painter's tape and just tape over my vinyl so that we can prep the stainless steel areas with the paint that we'll need in order to glitter our sections. 
So I'm starting first with some white chalk paint here. This is going to be my base paint. This cup was already prepped as far as sanding goes before I got started, but I didn't spray paint it just because I knew that the vinyl would pull it up anyway. So I decided to use chalk paint as my white base. And now we're going to go in with some acrylic paint in various colors in order to be in, able to color those sections. So one coat of white chalk paint, and then I went in with a purple acrylic paint. I have Caribbean blue for that bottom section. And then I have a mix of a fluorescent orange and a diva pink from crap or apple barrel paints that I use for that middle section, which is going to be that coral pink orangey color we have going on. So our paint has now officially dried. Of course, I sped up the process by using my heat gun because I don't like to wait for the paint to dry. I'm a little impatient, but we are going to go ahead and get ready to apply our glitter. So I am using the epoxy method application for glitter this time. So I'm mixing equal parts of part A and part B. I am using Flynn Sisters Premium Epoxy here to be able to apply my glitter. I know it's going to take a little bit longer for this to dry before I can get it on the turner, but I'm okay with that because it gives me a little bit more working time or pot life of the cup of epoxy to be able to ensure I get everything glittered on time and that I don't have that start to cure in that cup. So I've just mixed two and a half mLs of part A, two and a half mLs of part B, and I'm going to go ahead and just mix that thoroughly. Again, as I've said before, when you're doing epoxy method glitter application, it doesn't matter how vigorous you, you know, stir your epoxy. You want to make sure that it is stirred thoroughly and that part A and part B are mixed well. But as far as bubbles go, don't worry about going slow. That part doesn't matter because none of this epoxy is going to show through your glitter. And when you're rubbing such a thin amount of epoxy on your cup, you're not going to have any noticeable bubbles whatsoever because the coat of epoxy is so thin. So now I'm just putting just a little bit of epoxy in the blue and the purpled sections first. I wanted to make sure I was starting with the two farthest sections away because I can control how I'm laying my glitter in those sections versus trying to put the epoxy on all three sections and having to be mindful not to get glitter in that middle section, which I knew probably would give me a little bit of trouble. So again, a super thin coat of epoxy, like literally probably fingertip dip in your epoxy would be more than enough for each of these sections, even less for that small triangular section before you go in with adding your glitter. So I did the bottom section first because I wanted to make sure that got covered before I did the darker purple color up, up top. So I've just put that glitter over the bottom there and now we can clean up this section and we will go ahead and do the purple, which is of course the darkest of the three. So I wanted to make sure I did this after I did my lighter color so that I didn't get any cross contamination of my purple glitter falling into any epoxy that obviously was exposed as I tap off the excess. So again, we're in with that purple mix, really just controlling my area, making sure that I don't get any glitter where I don't want it to be. So nice even coat here. We're going to get this applied, I'll tap off the excess, and then we will go ahead and get this glitter section picked up as well. The third and final section we're going to work on is the coral section, and so I'm just going to grab a new glove, put that on my hand so that I can apply a thin coat of epoxy in that same coat of, or that same uh, medicine cup of 5 mLs and put just a little bit of epoxy on the center section here so that we can glitter this final section of glitter here. So real thin coat here. Another tip that I always like to mention is that the warmer your room, the better as far as it goes to spreading on your epoxy in a thin coat. You want to make sure that your epoxy is super thin when you're using uh, epoxy method glitter application. Any sort of excess epoxy will start to pool or will start to run down your cup which is not something that you want when you're applying your glitter because then that's going to mean that your glitter is also going to slide all over the place. So you really want to be paying attention and being mindful of how much your epoxy you're using when you're doing the epoxy method glitter application. I recommend no more than two mLs for an entire cup, sometimes a little bit more if you're using a chunkier mix like I did with the purple. But other than that, really sticking to less than half of the uh, mix of epoxy that I typically make, which is five mLs is the smallest I can make. Um, I'm using for glittering an entire cup. So now we're going in with that beautiful orange and coral looking glitter that we created. This is the final piece here that we'll need to glitter or section we'll have to glitter in order to get this cup completely ready for me to be able to continue with. So after picking up that 
glitter section. The only other thing that I'm going to do is because I am using a chunkier glitter, especially in that purple section there, I'm going to grab some parchment paper and I'm going to take the time now to roll my cup and flatten out that glitter. I want to make sure I don't have any issues with epoxy. And by issues, I don't mean like my epoxy not covering my glitter. I just mean that when I don't take the time to roll or smush my glitter down when I'm using a chunkier glitter, I typically have to apply more coat of glitter in order to get my glitter to be flat or be in a state that I feel comfortable with then going to sand. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape now. I'm not going to let this dry until I've removed the tape. I'm going to set it on my turner to dry for about six to eight hours. I ended up working on this the next morning. And so then I'm going to get my first two coats of epoxy on this cup. So I am using a fast set for my first two coats of epoxy. And you will notice that I am also doing a little bit of epoxy on the bottom rim as well, just where the vinyl is, not the inner stainless steel portion, just that bottom edge. So it took me about two coats of 30 mls of epoxy to get this nice and smooth so that it's ready for sanding so my cup's now ready for sanding the only real sanding that really needed to be done was the top rim so i went in with that with about an 80 grit sanding block to really knock off any of the glitter that was sticking up over the top and make sure i'm exposing that fine line of stainless steel around the top rim for our final coats of epoxy to adhere to now it is time though for all of the vinyl work that we're going to do for this cup and so I'm not showing you any sort of work that we did in Cricut Design Space because it really was not very much work. I used some rectangle shapes to make some vinyl lines and I found some butterfly shapes or butterfly SVGs in Cricut Design Space as well, but I also will link another one down in the description box from Creative Fabrica. That might be an option for you if you don't have or don't pay for Cricut Design Space or maybe don't even use Cricut Design Space and use Silhouette software or whatever software that you use for your cutting machine. So I grabbed some of this, like, I think it's like a magenta, purple, opal -y type, um, vinyl. I can't even remember where I got it from. I do think though that Vinyl Gallery does have this. So that is where I will link this vinyl. So I've just cut um, vinyl lines using a shape, the shapes feature in Cricut Design Space. I always cut my vinyl lines to be 0 0.10 as far as the height of the width or the width of the line. And then I make sure it's 11 and a half inches wide. That way I make sure I have enough to be able to go around my Cup. So I've just gone ahead and done those. After I finished the vinyl lines, I then did grab my butterfly images, which I had some like yellow to pink shifting opal vinyl that I have from Tech Wrap. And then I just did the outline, of course, in black. So now we are, we've layered the butterflies that we needed to layer. And now we're just going to go ahead and get these applied to the cup. So again, I will link an SVG that would a file that would be helpful in Creative Fabrica for anybody who doesn't have Cricut Design Space or use Cricut Design Space. But we're going to go ahead and now just apply all of these cute little butterflies kind of sporadically all over the cup. I really just love this like this look of sunflowers and butterflies. I just feel like sunflowers and butterflies are like best friends and they belong together on cups. And so that was why I decided to pull out and grab some butterfly SVGs because I just felt like that would be such a cute compliment to this beautiful pattern vinyl and these bright colors. So after I have done the layered butterflies. I did go in with smaller butterflies of the same, but I only did the bottom portion. I didn't cut out the black portion because that would be a lot of small weeding and probably my Cricut would have had a whole fit if I had made my Cricut do this. So I just did them in that beautiful opal vinyl that I will link and list down in the description box so that you can grab this as well. It's really beautiful. I really love all of these different like holographic and bright elements. This definitely is another cup that just screams spring or screams summer for me rather. And I'm, re I'm ready for it. I'm here for it. So once I have gotten all of my vinyl work done, the final thing that I like to do before I put anything back on the turner for final coats is I will of course seal this, which you'll see me do. So before I can seal this, I want to get this bottom all ready to go. That way we can do our sealing and do our final coats of epoxy. So I decided to paint the bottom of the 
cup, sort of the stainless steel that ex is exposed with a yellow paint. I wasn't quite sure at this point which colors I was going to use for the bottom of the cup, but I knew that yellow would be a pretty complimentary color, so I knew that that would be one of the colors. So I'm just taking some acrylic paint and I've just painted the bottom. So we're going to do one nice coat of the acrylic paint down there. I'm not really looking for anything too crazy, just enough to get a nice coating down on the bottom. Of course, speeding it up with my heat gun. <laughs> that way I don't have to wait for the paint to dry. So we're going to use UV resin to get this glitter bottom done. So I am taking my UV resin that I purchased off Amazon. I also am using a 260 watt nail lamp that I purchased off Amazon as well. I get that question a lot. And so we are going to mix a little bit of UV resin and some of this beautiful bright neon yellow glitter from Aisha Creations. We are using Flaming Flamingo, I believe this is. is this? No, this is Glowing Pineapple I like. The yellow is Glowing Pineapple. So I've used just a bit of UV resin to make sure that the glitter is still flowing but that my glitter is mixed in enough to be able to ensure that I have a thoroughly mixed solution of UV resin and that every every section of the UV resin is coated in glitter if that makes sense. So with this cup of UV resin I am going to only put this on the outer ring of this bottom section okay. So there's that first divot there when you remove the bottom of these cups, that is that outer ring is where I'm putting this yellow glittered UV resin, okay? So I probably used, I, I wanna say less than 10 mLs. The goal here is really to just cover that section. It's not to raise it all the way up to the tippy top because we will need to put coats of, a coat of UV resin over the logo tag that I'm going to be putting on the bottom here. So I'm just doing a pretty decent coat there along that outer edge as I'll do with the inner portion as well, but not so much that it is all the way up to the tip top, if that makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and cure that for 60 seconds to two minutes. And now we're going to go ahead and address the inner circle here. So I'm going to go back and use that coral orangey pink color that we created with glitter. So again, a little bit more UV resin this time, and then I'm going to pour in enough glitter just to coat the top of that UV resin. Get this all mixed in. Make sure that the um, UV resin still flows really well and isn't too clumpy or chunky, which sometimes can happen. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour this into the center section of the bottom of this cup here. So for this, I used just about all of it, um, all of the uh, UV resin in this cup, which again, I think was maybe 10 mLs, maybe a little bit less. And then I'm just going to take my cup and I'm just going to tilt it so that I can get all areas and sections of that inner circle really coated nicely and so that it's nice and even. Hit it with my heat gun just to pop any bubbles. Again, you could use a barbecue letter too. I just didn't have one on hand. So just the bubbles to push around that UV resin and expose any of those bubbles. And then I cured it for two minutes. The final thing I'm going to do here for the bottom before we seal this is I'm going to put my logo tag here on the bottom. So I got my logo tags from Mizzy Doodles Creations, who I will list and link down in the description box as well. She's got a really good deal and really inexpensive logo tags, which are perfect for anyone who does rhinestone projects or even if you do sort of glitter bottoms um, with your epoxy cups as well. They do really nestle quite nicely in that bottom like divot section and don't really become in the way or create a, create a wobbly bottom. So it's something that I've really loved to do to kind of add my logo to the bottom in a real fun way. And I've never had anybody complain about having you know these cute little logo tags on the bottom so after I've cured that for a minute I'm just going to do another layer of UV resin just a pretty thin layer that I'm just going to again kind of tilt my cup to get to cover that whole inner circle so I'm trying to cover the outer yellow as well as the inner orange section we have here and the logo tag Hit it with my heat gun one more time. Again, this is still a pretty flat layer. So if I look eye level at my cup, I know that this isn't sort of bubbling or bowing. And so I cured that for two minutes and then that was it. So the bottom is literally finished. This is just a really fun way to jazz up cups if you purchase your cups from the Steel Magnolia Cup. I've shown this before, um, but I haven't shown it in a while. So this was kind of fun to be able to do this. And I feel like it just adds another fun element to the cup. 
So before we put this cup on the turner for final coats of epoxy, I'm going to take some Minwax Polycrylic, which I love to use, put a thin layer over all of that vinyl to make sure I don't get any lifting in my final coats of epoxy. And then this is ready to go back on the turner for two final coats of epoxy. Look at that gorgeous sign. And here is the final look at this cup design. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And you guys know that I will see you in the next one. Bye!